It's your boy Charles Johnson. What up, world? This your boy Rico. Hey, it's your girl Fancy Free. So you tuned into the Busy Show live. Rico, you tuned into the motherfucking Busy Show right, right here on unsigned999.com. You tuned in to the livest internet radio show in Oklahoma, period. Shout out all the busy bodies of the world. Make sure you stay busy. Busy bodies, make sure y'all stay busy. Don't stop being busy. You, if you are still tuned in, like I said, my man Chief Peace is in the building. All right. And we got him for a live interview. Just, yeah. The dude been busy. I've been trying to get him <laughs> in here for like a month. My you bad, know. Bro. He didn't look. He didn't went out, you know, to to Cali and all that good shit, man. That's I forgot about that, man. Now, bro, tell the uh, tell the people how the experience was. Now, there was one thing that I read on one of your posts, and you said um, sometimes you have to get out of your your comfort level to go somewhere, mm -hmm. and like you know, what I'm saying really be like, yo, this this shit is. Yep. This is wicked. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I read that on like a fortune cookie. Like, right, right. Two years ago, for I read it and it <laughs> said uh, comfort zones are expanded through discomfort. And right, so, like, right. Every time I thought about that, I was like, man, it's for real. Every time you're nervous, anytime you're scared to do something, but if you know it's right to do it, yeah. and you do it, then you're like, oh shit, this right. ain't nothing. You know what I mean? And next time, five years from now, right. that situation may be. You know, something that changes your life, but you're right. comfortable in that situation because of right. something, you know what I mean? Like, no doubt. when I went out there, I was like, oh shit, I thought things were growing here, I thought things were, and they are, the yeah. culture here is crazy, but going out there and getting a, such a different perspective, man, I was like, right. man, Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I saw that, man, and I remember, uh, I remember you told me that you were going to go out there and do that, man, so I was like, when I get a chance, I got to ask this cat, you know what I'm saying, how it was, um, I've never been to Cali, you know what I'm saying, and uh, I've got a I've got a friend out in Cali, and she's like, oh, you gotta come, you know the the vibe, you know what I'm saying. Look, she looks she hippie, bro. I thought bro, it was me, bro. She is like a shout out Pepper Hernandez, man. That's her name too, Doctor Pepper Hernandez, oh, man. Shit. But she is like, bro. She like hippie, bro. She one with the earth. Yep. She have you on. How it is out there, bro. She have you on some shit, bro. So I miss her, man. I can't wait to get out there and get on some of that bro, you got Cali. It. Bro, you got yeah. it. Out there. Yeah. So, uh, so let me ask you this, man. Um, how long have you been doing music, man? Uh, just like four years now. I'm okay. 22. I started doing it. When I was like 17, 18, about to graduate high school. Okay. Yeah. What um, what was your inspiration, man? What was like some of your uh, favorite artists coming up? Bro, or, that's so funny. It's funny saying it now because like the respect for this artist is at a different level. But it was literally like Lil Wayne back in the day. Like okay. I was really into like literally just like the energy he had behind right. making music. He was so right. passionate about something. He made his living off of it. It wasn't even the fact like his lyrics. It was just like, dude, this dude loves what he does. And every day right. he wakes up, he just wants to do it. Like that's dope. Yeah, I was that's, like, man, I would love to have a life yeah, like that. And then right. I started realizing like, man, I think I could. Because I've always wrote poetry, and so I hear the songs that I like, and I'm like, man, I like these, this flows and stuff, but I think I could say something as well, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I feel right. like, and so that's when I used to just write to Little Wayne flows and then write my lyrics over it, almost like a parody, but I just write, you know, like a serious parody to his same yeah. flow. And then I was like, man, I guess I, I you know, I want to start making my own songs, my own right. beats, and my own flows, and then I just, it was just, this, yeah, that was, yeah, that's how I started. History, right? Man, I, uh, Bro, I remember when I when I started rhyming, man, just years ago, man. Like, like when I started rhyming, bro, I would, I didn't have, I didn't have what what the artists nowadays have uh have access to or or have at their fingertips. Hell, you can put studios on your phone now. Yeah. You, you can walk, record, mix the shit, and be done with it. No, no you know what bro. I'm saying? In no time. Uh, I was. I was back when we used to have to put two radios together, bro, <laughs> and put and put a piece of tissue in the cassette tape so that you could record on it. Oh, we play one yeah. instrumental to the other radio and yeah, record ourselves rapping, bro. So you gotta show me that. Let's make oh, a song like that. Hey, we can do it. We should. I've done that before too. We make a video out of it. That'd be dope as hell. <laughs> it was. That was. Oh, that's the concept. 
Yeah. We're gonna we'll um, do that. Yeah, we'll do write that. that down. That's pretty dope. Um but uh <laughs> man uh so you said your inspiration uh came from Lil Wayne and then you said that somewhere you know, I was listening to other artists. Oh you know, no, like, I'm not like, just, just the energy yeah, you know, yeah. I was like, man, you know what I mean, making a yeah. movie, having Having yeah. being whatever age he was, like twenty seven at the time, you know what I mean? I was thinking, I was like, Man, this dude really just like Yeah. It's about it, you know what I mean? I, I talked to twenty seven year olds, my cousins and shit, going to nursing college and shit, not even happy with their life, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. just like what do I really want, you know what I mean? I was about to graduate school, I was playing soccer, I was varsity captain, I like literally I went to practice one day and was just not feeling it. Right. Because I was thinking about my music and my coach went up to me and he was like, uh he's like What's up? I was like, man. I was like, I don't know. I was like, I just don't even really want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't know. I was like, you know, I don't even like, why would I come here, you know, after school to five, six, six o'clock every day playing games in the freezing ass cold? And yeah. I just like be home writing songs. <laughs> right. When I know that's what I want to right. do, you know what I mean? Yeah. He was trying to apply me for colleges at the time, scholarships. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. man, I'm just going to be honest, you know what I mean? And that day, literally, he was like, well, you can leave. And I was varsity captain. Keep that in mind. I was like, well, That's fucking crazy. I was like, bro, I was like, honestly, this is like, I can't lead a team if I'm not passionate about something. Like, I gotta, I just got out of soccer that day, just went home and kept writing songs right. and then got into one of his classes just because I wanted to, like, me and my coach were close. Yeah, yeah. So it was still cool. And, like, he let me, during the class, he just let me dip off to the library and write my songs because he knew that was my passion. It was tight. That's was cool, tight. man. It's always, it's always cool to have somebody support your passion. Mm hmm. It's pretty big, and especially. You know, somebody like that, you know it what I'm saying? Random. Someone, yeah, the soccer coach that supported yeah. a whole different passion. could have yeah. easily been like, nah, hell no, nah, yeah. dude. We need you to keep playing yeah. shit. We trying to win. I want to yeah. blame him, dude. Like this. It was, it was weird, bro. I don't know. But it was, like, very important. You're right, dude. It's a very important thing, man. To have people to support you. Without my having, like, little group of friends that support me at first, like, I would have just stopped. I would have just wrote some songs yeah. and it would have been like, all right, then, and then what am I going to do with my life? You know what right. I mean? But, right. That's what's up, man. Support for anybody can take them far. Yeah. It uh, makes you believe in yourself, man. And that's that's big. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. big to believe in yourself. Especially doing this. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, me, myself, at your age, man, I, you know, I knew that I could, you know what I'm saying, really, really go far with it. And, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, man, I hit the, I hit the point where I had to start paying a lot of bills mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying so then my time started going into uh finding a way to make money and start businesses and stuff but then i've made a circle now mm -hmm. i'm back I to got it. it i've made a full circle i'm making money now but now i can get back yep. to the true passion uh which is hip-hop the essence man you know what i'm saying um i noticed uh your music man is positive uplifting you know what I'm saying? Is, that, is it important for you to make positive music like that for people? You know what I'm saying? I mean, why else are you going to make something? I don't know. What else are you going to do? Put some, some negative energy around someone? Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to help. I feel like music is the most powerful language. I mean, yeah, Eng is. English is the universal language. But what's the real universal language? Like music, bro. Music. You can you can feel feeling from a, a fucking Turkish song if it's done right. You know what I mean? Right. It's a matter of composing the right song. And you know what I mean? Like the greatest people, John Lennon, like you can go through any, plenty of people, like really can <laughs> right. make an impact by little things you say in your music. And I started realizing that because at first my music was literally, it was fun. People liked it. I was just rapping about bitches, money, weed because it was the easiest thing to write about. Hell it's, yeah. It just, it's rhymes. All the shit rhymes. Literally, it's like funny as fuck how easy it is. Oh, yeah. But then you're like, and then my life hit me. Like literally I, after two years like doing that. I put out my first tape, had my little local buzz and shit, and I was like, oh yeah, this is cool, this is cool. And then life, like just life happened, bro. I started losing friends, I started mm -hmm. having crazy girlfriend troubles and started realizing like everything I mm -hmm. thought I had figured out in life, you know what I mean? Like I ain't just gonna be able to sit back and write some raps and smoke some weed, like I gotta take these experiences and use them. Cause I had a crazy little childhood, so like looking back at that, I was like, man, I ain't just supposed to sit in comfort, I'm supposed to really like, do something with this so right. every time i hit that like epiphany every time i start writing a song every line matters every word every line right. every right bit of energy i emphasize right. you know what i mean because someone's listening to it and at first it was a small audience you know what i mean but now it's like people are really realizing like oh shit like, checking for you man it's two things i focus on like entertaining and informing all times 
Like, you can entertain, but stay informing. Like, ha. that's a uh, man. That's it's a lot of artists out there. What he just said, All right? Entertain, but be informing. Basically, man, don't be out here just entertaining with no fucking message. That's a, it's a lot of artists out here uh, on big levels that I'm disappointed in. I mean, it just, my opinion don't mean shit to them, but it's just like what you said, man. You're out here, you're entertaining, you have uh, impressionable youth out here, and if all you, if you're just entertaining, which is cool, mm -hmm. but if you're not entertaining and using the stage that you're on to use your voice. And I feel like you're not doing the true essence of what hip hop is. Hip hop, exactly. When it comes down to hip hop, that's community based. You know what I'm saying? Man. So People forget that. Hey. <laughs> they get selfish with it. People no like doubt. their little local buzz or whatever that may be. I'm trying to change the world, though. Yeah. And that's big. That's big, man. You always got to be um, innovative. Uh, working on the, how to make yourself better. Uh, how to grow as an artist, mm -hmm. uh, how to reach out and help people that you might like. I know when I when I first got here like 17 years ago, man, and I'm not even going to lie, my mentality was like, yo, if I'm better than you, then I'm better than you. I'm, I'm not giving you no pointers. I'm not, yo, I just know I'm iller than you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yo, shit is trash, and I'm not going to tell you why. I'm not going to try and help you. Mm -hmm. uh, but nowadays, to me, is different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You might catch a cat that might need a pointer here or there. Like, yo, you might change your cadence up or, yeah. you know, uh, concentrate here or there yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that. But, uh, y'all tune in to the Biddy Show Live, man. I got my man Chief Peace in the building. Um, we got the first uh, music block coming up. It's going to be uh, Robin Williams. And after that, Lady on the Avenue. That's cool. Okay. Lady on the Avenue coming up. Uh, the concept for Robin Williams, where did it come from? Man. That, that's like, I made that title so obvious for a reason. Like, I wanted people to ask. Like, that is one line in the song. It's not the hook, nothing. But it's called Robin Williams Syndrome just because, like, there's anybody anybody a mom a grandma a freaking a teacher a, a burger king worker could be walking smiling today and waving at you and then go home and crying and you don't know just because mm. it's that robin williams syndrome they're just out there you know with that that smile like that 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 fa it's a fake smile you know what i mean and like yeah. i went through that phase as a kid growing up too. like I, I i grew up just sad as fuck and i didn't know why i was a deep thinker i thought about everything down to yeah. down to my mom the way my mom talked to me to religion to the universe to whatever it was i was just too mm -hmm. there was too much for a kid to like figure out and what you know i had to use learn to use my overthinking to like my advantage but when it was like taking right. over me you know what i mean i realized like that is such a deep deep feeling it is. And, it, and and it beats some people yeah. like it beat robin williams like he couldn't beat that but i beat it like somehow i literally got out of that right i stayed positive i realized the little key thoughts i had got me out of that but i was you know i'm just lucky for that like there was plenty of times i just wanted to dip off like i was not cool with like living in general you know what i mean and that's like a, a, all yeah. this shit you know i've had my girlfriend cheat on me with my best friend that i lived with at the time and then boom where do you go with that you got no best friend you got no girlfriend you're kicked out of your house with no mom like you know what i mean and that's when you're really that's what i'm saying that's when i realized okay what is my music really going to be about is this like because this is affecting me everything i write in my raps not only affects the people that listen but i feel all the energy that surrounds that you know what i mean so it's almost like self-healing of course that's why a lot of people create and write you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. then I'm like, you know, I got to keep in mind who's listening. Yeah. Keep in mind what message I want to put across. Yeah. And Robin Williams is like, to this day, the most important message I could get across. Because that's the most close that's to my deep. heart. You know what I mean? That's deep, man. Uh, you know, the the way you broke that down, that took me back to when I was in that, uh, that same realm that, and it's a... It's dark, it's lonely, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's sad, it's, it's deep, bro. You gave me chills. Yeah, right? It's, it's not, I got it's not chills fake, when you bro. said it. It's, it's not fake. And yeah. like people like, I talk to people who literally don't understand it. I have a friend That's who's happy real. as fuck all the time and he does not get how you could be sad 
and I can't tell you. I don't know. It's an energy that like just hits you, and sometimes it is so deep that every time you look at something, you want to cry. Every time you feel, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what I mean, someone talks to you, you want to cry. Not because they said something, it's just because your your body can't even. And then you start getting sick. When you're sad, you get your body feels it. Your immune system's down. Your whole my whole life was just shit from just being sad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that had just adds to yeah. it. I had one line in the song that literally is like explanation for it, and it says, "Lost souls are like potholes on dark roads." Mm, you you mm, could pass mm. a pothole all the time just driving on a dark road. You could mm. pass a hundred of them, and all of a sudden it hits one. Just like you could pass a hundred people good. smiling uh, at you uh, every day, and uh, then all of a sudden uh, that one that smiled at you was the one who goes home and kills herself that night. You know what I mean? Damn. And so like that's. Hey, boy, hey, look, man. If I'm telling you, the boy Chief's peace. The boy is special, man. Like I said, we just had a goosebump moment. Look, you got it. It's real, Still man. In. Um, not to go off a topic, but but staying on topic of what he's saying, man. Uh, if you got friends out here, and you know, like, come on, man, you know that they're not okay. These are your best friends. You know when they're okay and they're not. If they give you that fake smile, like they okay, man, you gotta. You gotta reach out, bro, because like mm -hmm. he just said, that that being in that period is is no fun, and I had to fight to get myself out of that position, man, because I didn't like where I was, I didn't like who I was, I didn't, mm -hmm. I just didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And once I fought and got myself out that shit, bro, like I feel unbeatable. Thing. Yeah, unbeatable. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Then you're like, man, what else can get me? I've already been dead like on earth dead on earth like whenever you literally don't f find the energy and great energy behind any feeling you're dead on earth you're just sitting here like going through your day to day man like right. when you find the beauty and ecstasy in every moment like mm -hmm. holy shit the real like <laughs> whoa exactly now I look back and I'm like what the right everything right. I saw it's not like I see anything different I still yeah. see people talk to me I still go to you yeah. know I have to go to work I still have to get my self responsibilities but for some reason my perspective on every single thing even Walmart is different you know what I mean yeah when you when you start looking at everything with a positive perspective and like you wake up and you say man I'm gonna be happy today I'm gonna be excited for every conversation. Every time I see someone, I'm gonna say hi a little more enthusiastic. Yeah, and, and that that energy just starts surrounding you. It's law of uh, attraction. Like, psh, it just your life just starts being nothing but that. Yeah. That negative energy doesn't feel welcome. Like, no, nah, it literally. Doesn't. I don't like it around me, man. Nope. Uh, I, don't I just feel can't welcome. do it. And it knows that it's gone. <laughs> Crazy, man. I uh, I'm happy I got him here so that I could get the meaning behind Robin Williams, man, and it's special. Now when I listen to this song, and it's about to come on in a second here, now when I listen to it, now I listen to it in a different way. You understand this is why I like artists that I can relate to. Not this bullshit that's out here. When I can relate to you, and you become one of my favorite artists. So, you are one of my favorite artists. That means a lot, for real. Real shit. Um, after that, real quick, uh, we just got a few seconds. What's uh, what's the concept behind Late on the Abbey? Or we can wait until we come back. Yeah, we should let them sit on it and let okay. listen to it. Uh, Robin Williams, y'all got the concept behind that one. We're going to get to Lady on the Avenue. And then when we get back, we'll let Chief Peace uh, break that one down. Cool. You listen to the Busy Show Live. Got my man Chief Peace. We'll be back. Busy Show. <laughs>